Hello, teachers and students. I have outlined here a medieval castle portfolio, essentially a, a written academic assignment to go along with the crafting project of building the castle. If you're a teacher and you want access to the portfolio, you can find a link in the description, and then that will also allow you to modify it to fit your needs. If you're a student working on the portfolio, accessing that link will probably be easier than rewatching these portions. Portfolio will include all of the following if you do it as is created by me. The cover page, castle construction and purpose, which is a, essentially a mini report in which you're composing information regarding the purpose of castles and how they're constructed. And in addition to that, you will have to um, lay out a medieval European map. This is drawn freehand. You can find medieval maps by doing Google searches. A drawn picture of a castle, one that actually existed that you're going to create an illustration for. A famous castle battle, so a medieval battle in which the castle played an important role. And you're going to then design your own castle, which is the kind of the crux of the project. Finally, you're going to also include a bibliography, a list of sources that you used. Now, I do suggest that in addition to accessing the internet, uh, visit your local or school library because you can find a bevy of really interesting books that have great images and visuals. So this is the blueprint, the diagram depicting the castle build. Now you could design this any way that you want to, but I think it is good to have a plan in mind, especially as you're working with students. Essentially, this particular castle is going to have four towers and they're six inches by six inches and the height is 10.5 inches. The main castle door is here, six inches across with two opening doors that'll be, end up being about three inches. And it has adjacent to it two towers that are roofed. This, the outer walls here are 6.75 inches in height and that will be the height of this area here, which is kind of the main castle area. And it's got kind of keep within a keep kind of a feel to it here. So this platform here is another 9.75 inches, which means the total height of this, because you'll add the previous platform, will be 16.5 inches. And then there's a great hall that's actually stationed on top of this section here, which is six inches in height, plus the roof height, which is another four inches. So you're talking about the highest point is going to be roughly 26.5 inches. These here are going to be some buttresses supporting the back of the structure. Um, so I think you can incorporate different elements. You could uh, eliminate elements. These roofed areas are going to be harder. So if you wanted like an easier building project, I think go more open towers like this, as opposed to towers like this. These are, are more difficult. Um, but hopefully after you see these videos, you feel confident that uh, that this is something you might be able to tackle. But after watching all these videos, if you look at that and think, no, I think that the, the roof element poses some challenges, you could just have this as an open area. Same with these towers here. And I think that that would work well. Dimensions of the castle from point here to point here is 30 inches. From here to here is 27 inches. So if you're going to put it on a base, obviously you're going to need something that's slightly bigger than that. I'll have a link to uh, this particular drawing and blueprint if you find that interesting in the description of the video. There definitely are a myriad of options when you go to create these stones for the castle project. So I'll show you some other options here, but I will show you the route that I end up going and I create these stones uh, outside of the classroom setting. But if you were working on this at home, you have various options. This does involve using a hot wire cutter. It is possible to cut this particular foam with a very sharp hobby knife or a box cutting utility knife. If you're using a carpenter square, you can get fairly accurate straight cuts. The key with that is that you want to um, press softly and make multiple passes. Um, as opposed to trying to cut through the foam all at once. But if you're interested in picking up a hot wire cutter, I do use the Proxen hot wire cutter, which can be purchased on Amazon. I'll include a link in the description if you want to check it out. It is a little bit of an investment though, so I probably wouldn't actually buy something like that if I was only going to use it for one project, but it does come in handy for other projects as well. So as I'm running the insulation uh, XPS foam through 
the hot wire cutter and this home can be purchased at home depot or potentially at your uh, other local big box store i run it through and i essentially want to create stones that are quarter inch by quarter inch by half inch so right now i have the hot wire cutter set to make cuts that are quarter inch and i'm just going to run the pieces through multiple times so essentially i'm getting uh, strips that are quarter inch by quarter inch and then the length of the foam that I happen to start with which is about six inches once I have a whole bunch of these pieces I then run it through one more time to get pieces that are then half inch wide and I reset it to be set at a half inch cuts but I repeat this process many many times in order to uh, get sufficient stones for the project Later on in the video, I will show you some alternatives that don't involve having to go and buy foam from Home Depot that actually will literally just use things that are probably destined for the recycling bin anyways. So um, more cost effective, uh, easier to get. And honestly, uh, if you take the time to, to prep them, I think it can look just as good as the insulation foam. But the insulation foam is a great option. I went to Home Depot to find a base for this particular project. Now you could use cardboard if you wanted to keep it really inexpensive and very easy to cut, but I wanted something that was gonna be a little bit more durable. So I went there, I had a half inch MDF in mind, which is what I ended up going with. It is relatively affordable, so you get a, a large quantity of it, much more than you'll need for this project, four foot by eight foot section, and I paid roughly $50. And they'll cut it for you at the store, which is also convenient. And they're usually willing to do three or four cuts. So not only can it be cut down to fit in your vehicle, but it also potentially could be cut to get a piece that you actually need. MDF is a material that is messy to cut. It produces a lot of sawdust. It tends to be heavier than other materials like plywood. It is very smooth though. So it does have some, some benefits. It tends to be smooth and flat. And it is a little bit less expensive, or actually significantly less expensive than uh, other options like plywood. I did consider the tempered hardboard, uh, which I use for projects from time to time. It's, it's even cheaper than the MDF. It's a little thinner. And uh, my concern was that it would be more prone to warping. So I, I went against it for this particular project. I do like it for smaller projects, though. If you really want a really durable base and you don't want to deal with cutting the wood at all, Home Depot does carry some pre-cut plywood. You can usually get it in two foot by two foot sections or two foot by four foot sections. If you're going to go this route, I would then just scale my design to fit that base. And here's the cutting station that they have at most big box stores. So if you uh, ask the employee, have your cuts in mind. So get it cut to the measurements that are going to work well for your projects in addition to getting it smaller to fit in your vehicle. If you are wanting to use the pink insulation foam, it's usually available at Home Depot in my experience. This is what it looks like. It also comes in a four foot by eight foot section. Usually this I just cut down in the parking lot with a, a box cutter. So if you just cut or run a line through, it'll snap and you can get in your car in three and four pieces. The next step is preparing the cardboard. So essentially I took my blueprint and I figured out every piece that would be needed to effectively make a frame of the castle out of cardboard. Now this frame is not going to be visible at all once the project's completed, right? We're going to cover every square inch of it. However, I wanted these cut to be precise so that then students could put it together. But if you're working on this project at home on your own, you easily could make these measurements and then using a, a series of carpenter squares, you could then make these cuts very accurate. Do be careful if you're using the box cutters, but um, making the cuts accurately is, is the most important aspect. And then you'll just simply piece them together. So I made the cuts for the students in this case, but you could make cuts at home. You could also, depending upon the thickness of your cardboard, draw straight lines on the cardboard and then simply cut them with a, a pair of scissors. After working on various projects where I really attempted to make straight cuts that were forming right angles, I was frustrated because I would measure it with the carpenter square and it would look perfect and I would make my cut and then it would come out just slightly off. And this isn't a huge deal, but it can matter depending on the project quite a bit. So the trick that I discovered, and I'm not a carpenter, but the trick I discovered was using two 
carpenter squares. That way you're getting a measurement at the front of the cut and then also one towards the back of the cut. And once I started to use two carpenter squares, then my cuts came out really precisely. If you are using the insulation foam to create stones, whether you're cutting them with uh, box cutters or you're cutting them with a hot wire cutter, you're going to want to texture the stones. They're going to be very flat. They're going to be very angular. So there's a few options for this. In this case, I'm using a tin can that's filled with spare bolts and um, washers and things of this nature. And I'm just going to shake it up in there so that the bolts are, are hitting the foam bricks. And what this causes is it causes the angular corners to be rounded over. It also causes the little indentations that stones would typically have. So it makes these very angular and flat foam blocks look more realistic. Now, this does create a lot of static. So in this case, I'm, I'm doing an experiment where I throw in a sheet of balance and see if this alleviates the static problem, which it does. However, I find that it created a lot of um, kind of residue that I ended up using the shop vac to clean up. So I don't know if it's totally worth it because there's more of a mess. Um, but if the static really bothers you, the stones are very staticky. They cling to the side of the can. They'll cling to the table. They'll cling to your hand. And uh, it is a bit of a, a chore to get them into a container. So you got to weigh that. But you do want to texture them. Another option is texturing them after they're on the piece, although it's hard to get little gaps between the stones or make it look like the, the, the edges aren't touching perfectly. But you can run a, a tin foil ball over them and pressing hard and making those indentations. Or you could run a, a big stone on top of it. But in this case, I think that this is a, a better method. I do want to mention some alternatives to using the foam bricks because it does involve um, buying a, a fairly somewhat expensive huge piece of foam from Home Depot and it involves using some tools, either box cutters or uh, the hot wire cutter that you may not have access to or may not want to use. And I think there's plenty of good alternatives in this case. So cereal box uh, cut into strips and then those strips cut into rectangles and those rectangles are used as the stones and just when you glue them on, have a little gap between each piece. And then when you paint it up, I think that these would actually look great. So I think this is a great option. And um, honestly, it's, it's readily available. Uh, you can just start saving your cereal boxes. And then when it comes time to do the project, you're just using those. So the, the cost is next to nothing. And I think ultimately they would look great. Likewise, there are some other cardboard materials that I think work exceptionally well for this if you start to set them aside with the project in mind. These are the bulk egg containers or the drink containers that come from like McDonald's or Starbucks or places like that. They both have a similar texture. So they're, if you ever fill them, they're really bumpy. They have a lot of texture. When you go to paint things, having texture can be very helpful. And, and make it look more realistic. Um, so if you flatten these materials out and then cut them into rectangles, I think gluing those on as your stones for the castle is a great um, strategy as well. And if you have this project in mind long enough, you could just set these aside and then you, you're gonna need a fair amount of them. So um, having these set aside for this particular project and then just making your stones. And then if you go with either of these routes, the trick will be the corners. So you want to uh, make sure you're wrapping around corners and then also make sure that you're offsetting the stones. But I think that this is another really inexpensive option that would actually look really, really good. I would um, probably paint the cardboard black and then make sure you have a little gap between the stones and paint the stones up. And I think that this is also another fine option. And here, just showing you uh, when you go around the corners, that's how you want to do it. Probably when you're attaching these to the corner, you're going to want to use something like hot glue. When you're attaching them to flat surface, I think the Elmer's PVA glue is, is a really great option. And these will actually dry really fast because the cardboard's going to absorb that Elmer's glue. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you consider the project. If you do the project, uh, I hope you enjoy it. And I'll... Um, be posting videos with the other portions of the, the project in the weeks to come. So enjoy. Bye.